British Isles, Wikipedia article audio. The British Isles are a group of islands off the northwestern coast of continental Europe that consist of the islands of Great Britain, Ireland, and over 6,000 smaller isles. Situated in the North Atlantic, the islands have a total area of approximately 315,159 km2, and a combined population of just under 70 million. Two sovereign states are located on the islands, the Republic of Ireland and the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. The British Isles also include three crown dependencies, the Isle of Man and, by tradition, the Bailiwick of Jersey and the Bailiwick of Guernsey in the Channel Islands, although the latter are not physically a part of the archipelago. The oldest rocks in the group are in the northwest of Scotland, Ireland, and North Wales and are 2,700 million years old. During the Silurian period the northwestern regions collided with the southeast, which had been part of a separate continental landmass. The topography of the islands is modest in scale by global standards. Ben Nevis rises to an elevation of only 1,344 meters, and Loch Ney, which is notably larger than other lakes on the Isles, covers 390 square kilometers. The climate is temperate marine, with mild winters and warm summers. The North Atlantic drift brings significant moisture and raises temperatures 11A degrees C above the global average for the latitude. This led to a landscape which was long dominated by temperate rainforest, although human activity has since cleared the vast majority of forest cover. The region was re-inhabited after the last glacial period of Quaternary glaciation, by 12,000 BC when Great Britain was still part of a peninsula of the European continent. Ireland, which became an island by 12,000 BC, was not inhabited until after 8,000 BC. Great Britain became an island by 5,600 BC. Etymology Geography Hiberni, Pictish and Britain's tribes all speaking insular Celtic, inhabited the islands at the beginning of the first millennium AD. Much of Britannic controlled Britain was conquered by the Roman Empire from AD 43. The first Anglo Saxons arrived as Roman power waned in the 5th century and eventually dominated the bulk of what is now England. Viking invasions began in the 9th century followed by more permanent settlements and political change in Euro particularly in England. The subsequent Norman conquest of England in 1066 and the later Angevin partial conquest of Ireland from 1169 led to the imposition of a new Norman ruling elite across much of Britain and parts of Ireland. By the late Middle Ages, Great Britain was separated into the kingdoms of England and Scotland, while control in Ireland fluxed between Gaelic kingdoms, Hiberno-Norman lords and the English-dominated lordship of Ireland, soon restricted only to the Pale. The 1603 Union of the Crowns, Acts of Union 1707 and Acts of Union 1800 attempted to consolidate Britain and Ireland into a single political unit, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, with the Isle of Man and the Channel Islands remaining as crown dependencies. The expansion of the British Empire and migrations following the Irish Famine and Highland Clearances resulted in the distribution of the island's population and culture throughout the world and a rapid depopulation of Ireland in the second half of the 19th century. Most of Ireland seceded from the United Kingdom after the Irish War of Independence and the subsequent Anglo-Irish Treaty, with six counties remaining in the UK as Northern Ireland. The term British Isles is controversial in Ireland, where there are objections to its usage due to the association of the word British with Ireland. 
The government of Ireland does not recognise or use the term and its embassy in London discourages its use. As a result, Britain and Ireland is used as an alternative description, and Atlantic Archipelago has had limited use among a minority in academia, while British Isles is still commonly employed. Within them, they are also sometimes referred to as these islands. The earliest known references to the islands as a group appeared in the writings of seafarers from the ancient Greek colony of Mass Alia. The original records have been lost, however, later writings, e.g. Avianus S. Orum Maritima, that quoted from the Massiliad Periplus and from Pythias S. on the ocean have survived. In the 1st century BC, Diodorus Siculus has Pritanica Nasos, the British island, and Pret Anoi, the Britons. Strabo used I I I I I I plus or minus I one half I superscript one I degree I registered trademark, and Martian of Heraclea, in his Peri plus Maris Exteri, used I plus or minus A one fourth plus or minus I I I I I I plus or minus I one half I superscript one I degree I plus or minus I I one half A I superscript one to refer to the islands. Historians today though not in absolute agreement, largely agree that these Greek and Latin names were probably drawn from native Celtic language names for the archipelago. Along these lines, the inhabitants of the islands were called the Iiiiiii plus or minus I one half II. The shift from the P of Britannia to the B of Britannia by the Romans occurred during the time of Julius Caesar. The Greco-Egyptian scientist Claudius Ptolemy referred to the larger island as Great Britain and to Ireland as Little Britain in his work Almagest. In his later work, Geography, he gave these islands the names Alwian, Iwernia, and Mona, suggesting these may have been names of the individual islands not known to him at the time of writing Almagest. The name Albion appears to have fallen out of use sometime after the Roman conquest of Great Britain, after which Britain became the more commonplace name for the island called Great Britain. The earliest known use of the phrase British Isles in the English language is dated 1577 in a work by John D. Today, this name is seen by some as carrying imperialist overtones although it is still commonly used. Other names used to describe the islands include the Anglo-Celtic Isles, Atlantic Archipelago, British-Irish Isles, Britain and Ireland, UK and Ireland, and British Isles and Ireland. Owing to political and national associations with the word British, the Government of Ireland does not use the term British Isles and in documents drawn up jointly between the British and Irish governments, the archipelago is referred to simply as these islands. Nonetheless, British Isles is still the most widely accepted term for the archipelago. Climate The British Isles lie at the juncture of several regions with past episodes of tectonic mountain building. These orogenic belts form a complex geology that records a huge and varied span of Earth's history. Of particular note was the Caledonian Orogena during the Ordovician period, c. 488 a Euro 444 Ma and early Silurian period, when the Craton Baltica collided with the terrain of Alonia to form the mountains and hills in northern Britain and Ireland. Baltica formed roughly the northwestern half of Ireland and Scotland. Further collisions caused the Variscan orogeny in the Devonian and Carboniferous periods, forming the hills of Munster, southwest England, and southern Wales. Over the last 500 million years the land that forms the islands has drifted northwest from around 30A degree S crossing the equator around 370 million years ago to reach its present northern latitude. The islands have been shaped by numerous glaciations during the Quaternary period, the most recent being the Devonshian. As this ended, 
the central Irish Sea was deglaciated and the English Channel flooded, with sea levels rising to current levels some 4,000 to 5,000 years ago, leaving the British Isles in their current form. Whether or not there was a land bridge between Great Britain and Ireland at this time is somewhat disputed, though there was certainly a single ice sheet covering the entire sea. Flora and Fauna The west coasts of Ireland and Scotland that directly face the Atlantic Ocean are generally characterised by long peninsulas and headlands and bays, the internal and eastern coasts are smoother. There are about 136 permanently inhabited islands in the group, the largest two being Great Britain and Ireland. Great Britain is to the east and covers 83,700 square miles. Ireland is to the west and covers 32,590 square miles. The largest of the other islands are to be found in the Hebrides, Orkney and Shetland to the north. Anglesey and the Isle of Man between Great Britain and Ireland, and the Channel Islands near the coast of France. The islands are at relatively low altitudes, with central Ireland and southern Great Britain particularly low-lying, the lowest point in the islands is the North Slob in County Wexford, Ireland, with an elevation of a 3.0 metres. The Scottish Highlands in the northern part of Great Britain are mountainous, with Ben Nevis being the highest point on the islands at 1,343 m. Other mountainous areas include Wales and parts of Ireland, although only seven peaks in these areas reach above 1,000 m. Lakes on the islands are generally not large, although Loch Nee in Northern Ireland is an exception covering 150 square miles. The largest freshwater body in Great Britain is Loch Lomond at 27.5 square miles, and Loch Ness, by volume whilst Loch Morar is the deepest freshwater body in the British Isles, with a maximum depth of 310 m. There are a number of major rivers within the British Isles. The longest is the Shannon in Ireland at 224 miles. The River Severn at 220 miles is the longest in Great Britain. Demographics The climate is mild, moist, and changeable with abundant rainfall and a lack of temperature extremes. It is defined as a temperate oceanic climate or CFB on the Koppen Climate Classification System, a classification it shares with most of Northwest Europe. The country receives generally cool summers and mild winters. The North Atlantic Drift, which flows from the Gulf of Mexico, brings with it significant moisture and raises temperatures 11A degree C above the global average for the island's latitudes. Winters are cool and wet, with summers mild and also wet. Most Atlantic depressions pass to the north of the islands, combined with the general westerly circulation and interactions with the landmass, this imposes an east to euro west variation in climate. History The islands enjoy a mild climate and varied soils, giving rise to a diverse pattern of vegetation. Animal and plant life is similar to that of the northwestern European mainland. There are however, fewer numbers of species, with Ireland having even less. All native flora and fauna in Ireland is made up of species that migrated from elsewhere in Europe, and Great Britain in particular. The only window when this could have occurred was between the end of the last ice age and when the land bridge connecting the two islands was flooded by sea. Politics As with most of Europe, prehistoric Britain and Ireland were covered with forest and swamp. Clearing began around 6000 BC and accelerated in medieval times. Despite this, Britain retained its primeval forests longer than most of Europe due to a small population and later development of trade and industry, 
and wood shortages were not a problem until the 17th century. By the 18th century, most of Britain's forests were consumed for shipbuilding or manufacturing charcoal and the nation was forced to import lumber from Scandinavia, North America, and the Baltic. Most forest land in Ireland is maintained by state forestation programs. Almost all land outside urban areas is farmland. However, Relatively large areas of forest remain in East and North Scotland and in South East England. Oak, elm, ash, and beech are amongst the most common trees in England. In Scotland, pine and birch are most common. Natural forests in Ireland are mainly oak, ash, which elm, birch, and pine. Beech and lime, though not native to Ireland, are also common there. Farmland hosts a variety of semi-natural vegetation of grasses and flowering plants. Woods, hedgerows, mountain slopes and marshes host heather, wild grasses, gorse, and bracken. Many larger animals, such as wolf, bear, and the European elk are today extinct. However, some species such as red deer are protected. Other small mammals, such as rabbits, foxes, badgers, hares, hedgehogs, and stoats, are very common and the European beaver has been reintroduced in parts of Scotland. Wild boar have also been reintroduced to parts of southern England, following escapes from boar farms and illegal releases. Many rivers contain otters and seals are common on coasts. Over 200 species of bird reside permanently and another 200 migrate. Common types are the common chaffinch, common blackbird, house sparrow, and common starling, all small birds. Large birds are declining in number, except for those kept for game such as pheasant, partridge, and red grouse. Fish are abundant in the rivers and lakes in particular salmon, trout, perch, and pike. Sea fish include dogfish, cod, sole, pollock and bass, as well as mussels, crab, and oysters along the coast. There are more than 21,000 species of insects. British Euro-Irish Council Few species of reptiles or amphibians are found in Great Britain or Ireland. Only three snakes are native to Great Britain, the common European adder, the grass snake and the smooth snake, none are native to Ireland. In general, Great Britain has slightly more variation in native wildlife, with weasels, polecats, wildcats, most shrews, moles, water voles, roe deer and common toads also being absent from Ireland. This pattern is also true for birds and insects. Notable exceptions include the Kerry slug and certain species of wood louse native to Ireland but not Great Britain. Domestic animals include the Connemara pony, Shetland pony, English mastiff, Irish wolfhound, and many varieties of cattle and sheep. The demographics of the British Isles today are characterized by a generally high density of population in England, which accounts for almost 80% of the total population of the islands. In elsewhere on Great Britain and on Ireland, high density of population is limited to areas around, or close to, a few large cities. The largest urban area by far is the Greater London built-up area with 9 million inhabitants. Other major population centres include the Greater Manchester built-up area, West Midlands Conurbation and West Yorkshire urban area in England, Greater Glasgow in Scotland and Greater Dublin area in Ireland. The population of England rose rapidly during the 19th and 20th centuries whereas the populations of Scotland and Wales showed little increase during the 20th century, the population of Scotland remaining unchanged since 1951. 
Ireland for most of its history comprised a population proportionate to its land area. However, since the Great Irish Famine, the population of Ireland has fallen to less than one-tenth of the population of the British Isles. The famine, which caused a century-long population decline, drastically reduced the Irish population and permanently altered the demographic makeup of the British Isles. On a global scale, this disaster led to the creation of an Irish diaspora that numbers 15 times the current population of the island. The linguistic heritage of the British Isles is rich, with 12 languages from six groups across four branches of the Indo-European family. The insular Celtic languages of the Goidelic subgroup and the Britonic subgroup are the only remaining Celtic languages a Euro the last of their continental relations becoming extinct before the 7th century. The Norman languages of Gurna copyright Shaeus, Jaeria, and Serquias spoken in the Channel Islands are similar to French. A cant, called Chilta, is spoken by Irish travellers, often as a means to conceal meaning from those outside the group. However, English, sometimes in the form of Scots, is the dominant language with few monoglots remaining in the other languages of the region. The Norn language of Orkney and Shetland became extinct around 1880. Culture At the end of the last Ice Age, what are now the British Isles were joined to the European mainland as a mass of land extending northwest from the modern-day northern coastline of France, Belgium and the Netherlands. Ice covered almost all of what is now Scotland, most of Ireland and Wales, and the hills of northern England. From 14,000 to 10,000 years ago, as the ice melted, sea levels rose separating Ireland from Great Britain and also creating the Isle of Man. About two to four millennia later, Great Britain became separated from the mainland. Britain probably became repopulated with people before the Ice Age ended and certainly before it became separated from the mainland. It is likely that Ireland became settled by sea after it had already become an island. Transport At the time of the Roman Empire, about 2,000 years ago, various tribes, which spoke Celtic dialects of the insular Celtic group, were inhabiting the islands. The Romans expanded their civilization to control southern Great Britain but were impeded in advancing any further, building Hadrian's Wall to mark the northern frontier of their empire in 122 AD. At that time, Ireland was populated by a people known as Hiberni, the northern third or so of Great Britain by a people known as Picts and the southern two-thirds by Britons. Anglo-Saxons arrived as Roman power waned in the 5th century AD. Initially, their arrival seems to have been at the invitation of the Britons as mercenaries to repulse incursions by the Hiberni and Picts. In time, Anglo-Saxon demands on the British became so great that they came to culturally dominate the bulk of southern Great Britain though recent genetic evidence suggests Britain still formed the bulk of the population. This dominance creating what is now England and leaving culturally British enclaves only in the north of what is now England, in Cornwall, and what is now known as Wales. Ireland had been unaffected by the Romans except, significantly, for being Christianized a Euro traditionally by the Romano-Britain, St. Patrick. As Europe, including Britain, descended into turmoil following the collapse of Roman civilization, an era known as the Dark Ages, Ireland entered a Golden Age and responded with missions, the founding of monasteries and universities. These were later joined by Anglo-Saxon missions of a similar nature. Viking invasions began in the 9th century, followed by more permanent settlements, particularly along the east coast of Ireland, 
the west coast of modern-day Scotland and the Isle of Man. Though the Vikings were eventually neutralized in Ireland, their influence remained in the cities of Dublin, Cork, Limerick, Waterford, and Wexford. England, however, was slowly conquered around the turn of the first millennium AD, and eventually became a feudal possession of Denmark. The relations between the descendants of Vikings in England and counterparts in Normandy, in northern France, lay at the heart of a series of events that led to the Norman conquest of England in 1066. The remnants of the Duchy of Normandy, which conquered England, remain associated to the English crown as the Channel Islands to this day. A century later, the marriage of the future Henry II of England to Eleanor of Aquitaine created the Angevin Empire, partially under the French crown. At the invitation of Diarmate Mac Merchada, a provincial king, and under the authority of Pope Adrian IV, the Angevins invaded Ireland in 1169. Though initially intended to be kept as an independent kingdom, the failure of the Irish High King to ensure the terms of the Treaty of Windsor led Henry II, as King of England, to rule as effective monarch under the title of Lord of Ireland. This title was granted to his younger son, but when Henry's heir unexpectedly died, the title of King of England and Lord of Ireland became entwined in one person. By the late Middle Ages, Great Britain was separated into the kingdoms of England and Scotland. Power in Ireland fluxed between Gaelic kingdoms, Hiberno-Norman lords and the English-dominated lordship of Ireland. A similar situation existed in the Principality of Wales, which was slowly being annexed into the Kingdom of England by a series of laws. During the course of the 15th century, the Crown of England would assert a claim to the Crown of France, thereby also releasing the King of England as from being vassal of the King of France. In 1534, King Henry VIII, at first having been a strong defender of Roman Catholicism in the face of the Reformation, separated from the Roman Church after failing to secure a divorce from the Pope. His response was to place the King of England as the only supreme head in earth of the Church of England, thereby removing the authority of the Pope from the affairs of the English Church. Ireland, which had been held by the King of England as Lord of Ireland, but which strictly speaking had been a feudal possession of the Pope since the Norman invasion was declared a separate kingdom in personal union with England. Scotland, meanwhile had remained an independent kingdom. In 1603, that changed when the King of Scotland inherited the Crown of England and consequently the Crown of Ireland also. The subsequent 17th century was one of political upheaval, religious division, and war. English colonialism in Ireland of the 16th century was extended by large-scale Scottish and English colonies in Ulster. Religious division heightened and the King in England came into conflict with Parliament over his tolerance towards Catholicism. The resulting English Civil War or War of the Three Kingdoms led to a revolutionary republic in England. Ireland, largely Catholic was mainly loyal to the King. Following defeat to the Parliament's army, large-scale land distributions from loyalist Irish nobility to English commoners in the service of the Parliamentary Army created a new ascendancy class which obliterated the remnants of Old English and Gaelic Irish nobility in Ireland. The new ruling class was Protestant and English, whilst the populace was largely Catholic and Irish. This theme would influence Irish politics for centuries to come. When the monarchy was restored in England, the king found it politically impossible to restore the lands of former landowners in Ireland. The Glorious Revolution of 1688 repeated similar themes, 
a Catholic king pushing for religious tolerance in opposition to a Protestant parliament in England. The king's army was defeated at the Battle of the Boyne and at the militarily crucial Battle of Orham in Ireland. Resistance held out, eventually forcing the guarantee of religious tolerance in the Treaty of Limerick. However, the terms were never honoured and a new monarchy was installed. The kingdoms of England and Scotland were unified in 1707 creating the Kingdom of Great Britain. Following an attempted Republican Revolution in Ireland in 1798, the kingdoms of Ireland and Great Britain were unified in 1801, creating the United Kingdom. The Isle of Man and the Channel Islands remaining outside of the United Kingdom but with their ultimate good governance being the responsibility of the British Crown. Although, the colonies of North America that would become the United States of America were lost by the start of the 19th century, the British Empire expanded rapidly elsewhere. A century later it would cover one-third of the globe. Poverty in the United Kingdom remained desperate, however, and industrialization in England led to terrible condition for the working classes. Mass migrations following the Irish famine and Highland clearances resulted in the distribution of the island's population and culture throughout the world and a rapid depopulation of Ireland in the second half of the 19th century. Most of Ireland seceded from the United Kingdom after the Irish War of Independence and the subsequent Anglo-Irish Treaty, with the six counties that formed Northern Ireland remaining as an autonomous region of the UK. There are two sovereign states in the Isles, Ireland and the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Ireland, sometimes called the Republic of Ireland, governs five-sixths of the island of Ireland, with the remainder of the island forming Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland is a part of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, usually shortened to simply the United Kingdom, which governs the remainder of the archipelago with the exception of the Isle of Man and the Channel Islands. The Isle of Man and the two states of the Channel Islands, Jersey and Guernsey, are known as the Crown Dependencies. They exercise constitutional rights of self-government and judicial independence, responsibility for international representation rests largely upon the UK, and responsibility for defence is reserved by the UK. The United Kingdom is made up of four constituent parts, England, Scotland and Wales, forming Great Britain, and Northern Ireland in the northeast of the island of Ireland. Of these, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland have devolved governments, meaning that each has its own parliament or assembly and is self-governing with respect to certain areas set down by law. For judicial purposes, Scotland, Northern Ireland and England and Wales form separate legal jurisdiction, with there being no single law for the UK as a whole. Ireland, the United Kingdom and the three Crown Dependencies are all parliamentary democracies, with their own separate parliaments. All parts of the United Kingdom return members to Parliament in London. In addition to this, voters in Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland return members to a parliament in Edinburgh and to assemblies in Cardiff and Belfast respectively. Governance in the norm is by majority rule, however, Northern Ireland uses a system of power sharing whereby unionists and nationalists share executive posts proportionately and where the assent of both groups are required for the Northern Ireland Assembly to make certain decisions. The British monarch is the head of state of the United Kingdom, while in the Republic of Ireland the head of state is the President of Ireland. Ireland and the United Kingdom are both part of the European Union. The Crown Dependencies are not a part of the EU, but do participate in certain aspects that were negotiated as a part of the UK's accession to the EU. 
neither the United Kingdom or Ireland are part of the Schengen area, that allow passport-free travel between EU member states. However, since the partition of Ireland, an informal free travel area had existed across the region. This area required formal recognition in 1997 during the course of negotiations for the Amsterdam Treaty of the European Union, and is now known as the Common Travel Area. Reciprocal arrangements allow British and Irish citizens full voting rights in the two states. Exceptions to this are presidential elections and constitutional referendums in the Republic of Ireland, for which there is no comparable franchise in the other states. In the United Kingdom, these predate European Union law, and in both jurisdictions go further than that required by European Union law. Other EU nationals may only vote in local and European Parliament elections while resident in either the UK or Ireland. In 2008, a UK Ministry of Justice report investigating how to strengthen the British sense of citizenship proposed to end this arrangement, arguing that the right to vote is one of the hallmarks of the political status of citizens, it is not a means of expressing closeness between countries. In addition, some civil bodies are organized throughout the islands as a wholly a euro for example the Samaritans, which is deliberately organized without regard to national boundaries on the basis that a service which is not political or religious should not recognize sectarian or political divisions. The Royal National Lifeboat Institution, a charity that operates a lifeboat service, is also organized throughout the islands as a whole, covering the waters of the United Kingdom, Ireland, the Isle of Man, and the Channel Islands. The Northern Ireland peace process has led to a number of unusual arrangements between the Republic of Ireland, Northern Ireland, and the United Kingdom. For example, Citizens of Northern Ireland are entitled to the choice of Irish or British citizenship or both and the governments of Ireland and the United Kingdom consult on matters not devolved to the Northern Ireland Executive. The Northern Ireland Executive and the Government of Ireland also meet as the North-South Ministerial Council to develop policies common across the island of Ireland. These arrangements were made following the 1998 Good Friday Agreement. Another body established under the Good Friday Agreement, the British Euro-Irish Council, is made up of all of the states and territories of the British Isles. The British Euro-Irish Parliamentary Assembly predates the British Euro-Irish Council and was established in 1990. Originally it comprised 25 members of the Wariachtis, the Irish Parliament, and 25 members of the Parliament of the United Kingdom, with the purpose of building mutual understanding between members of both legislatures. Since then the role and scope of the body has been expanded to include representatives from the Scottish Parliament, the National Assembly for Wales, the Northern Ireland Assembly, the States of Jersey, the States of Guernsey and the High Court of Tynwald. The Council does not have executive powers, but meets biannually to discuss issues of mutual importance. Similarly, the Parliamentary Assembly has no legislative powers but investigates and collects witness evidence from the public on matters of mutual concern to its members. Reports on its findings are presented to the governments of Ireland and the United Kingdom. During the February 2008 meeting of the British Euro-Irish Council, it was agreed to set up a standing secretariat that would serve as a permanent civil service for the Council. Leading on from developments in the British Euro-Irish Council, the chair of the British Euro-Irish Interparliamentary Assembly, Niall Blaney, has suggested that the body should shadow the British Euro-Irish Council's work. The United Kingdom and Ireland have separate media, 
although British television, newspapers and magazines are widely available in Ireland, giving people in Ireland a high level of familiarity with cultural matters in the United Kingdom. Irish newspapers are also available in the UK, and Irish state and private television is widely available in Northern Ireland. Certain reality TV shows have embraced the whole of the islands, for example The X Factor, seasons 3, 4 and 7 of which featured auditions in Dublin and were open to Irish voters, whilst the show previously known as Britain's Next Top Model became Britain and Ireland's Next Top Model in 2011. A few cultural events are organised for the island group as a whole. For example, the Costa Book Awards are awarded to authors resident in the UK or Ireland. The Mercury Music Prize is handed out every year to the best album from a British or Irish musician or group. Many globally popular sports had modern rules codified in the British Isles, including golf, association football, cricket, rugby, snooker, and darts, as well as many minor sports such as croquet, bowls, pitch and putt, water polo and handball. A number of sports are popular throughout the British Isles, the most prominent of which is association football. While this is organised separately in different national associations, leagues and national teams, even within the UK, it is a common passion in all parts of the islands. Rugby union is also widely enjoyed across the islands with four national teams from England, Ireland, Scotland and Wales. The British and Irish Lions is a team chosen from each national team and undertakes tours of the Southern Hemisphere rugby playing nations every four years. Ireland play as a united team, represented by players from both Northern Ireland and the Republic. These national rugby teams play each other each year for the Triple Crown as part of the Six Nations Championship. Also, since 2001, the professional club teams of Ireland, Scotland, Wales and Italy compete against each other in the PR014. The Ryder Cup in golf was originally played between a United States team and a team representing Great Britain and Ireland. From 1979 onwards this was expanded to include the whole of Europe. London Heathrow Airport is Europe's busiest airport in terms of passenger traffic and the Dublin-London route is both the busiest air route in Europe collectively, and is the busiest route out of Heathrow, it's also the second busiest international air route in the world. The English Channel and the Southern North Sea are the busiest seaways in the world. The Channel Tunnel, opened in 1994, links Great Britain to France and is the second longest rail tunnel in the world. The idea of building a tunnel under the Irish Sea has been raised since 1895, when it was first investigated. Several potential Irish Sea Tunnel projects have been proposed most recently the Tusker Tunnel between the ports of Rosslar and Fishguard proposed by the Institute of Engineers of Ireland in 2004. A rail tunnel was proposed in 1997 on a different route, between Dublin and Holyhead, by British engineering firm Simons. Either tunnel, at 50 miles, would be by far the longest in the world, and would cost an estimated a pound one five billion or a twenty billion. A proposal in 2007 estimated the cost of building a bridge from County Antrim in Northern Ireland to Galloway in Scotland at a pound three point five bn. British Irish Isles, the Sea British Isles, British Isles. The a geographical term for England, Scotland, Wales and Ireland, together with all offshore islands. A more accurate term today is the British-Irish Isles.